Welcome back. Good. What's up, guys? All right, good afternoon. Welcome back to the interview room here at Little Caesars Arena as we preview the 2024 NCAA Midwest Regional Final here in Detroit. We're pleased to be joined by the second-seeded Tennessee Volunteers who will face top-seeded Purdue on Sunday at 2.20 p.m. on CBS. Please remember to silence your cell phones as a courtesy to the team members and other media in the room. Please raise your hand for a microphone to be brought to you, and when you do ask a question, please introduce yourself and your media affiliation. Please note that the recording of press conferences on cameras or on cell phones is prohibited throughout the rest of the Midwest Regional. From your left to your right, we are joined by head coach Rick Barnes, Jordan Ganey, Dalton Connect, Jemai Meshack, and Josiah Jordan-James. Tennessee student athletes will be available until 3.10 p.m., and then we'll continue with Coach Barnes for an additional 20 minutes. Uh, in the meantime, the student athletes will make their way to the breakout rooms off to your immediate right when you depart the interview room here. Coach, if you wouldn't mind starting us out with an opening statement, we'll then open it up for questions. Obviously, we're excited to be here and going up against a, a team that we played earlier in the year over in, in Honolulu. And um, so they're familiar with us. We're familiar with them. Uh, going back, looking at that tape last night, uh, both teams have improved a lot since then. But uh, And it was a really hard-fought game over there. A uh, lot of fouls called in the game. I don't think it will be that many called here. But, uh, uh, again, we uh, I'm really excited for these guys to have a chance to go back and, and play Purdue again. Thanks, Coach. Let's go to questions for the student athletes or Coach Barnes. We'll start with on the right side here in the fourth row. Myron Metcalf, ESPN. For Dalton, what do you do, you know, with the film of the first game? Do you think you can take a lot from that, or is it just a completely different situation? Uh, yeah, I mean, I definitely will watch that film with Coach Barnes and stuff and watching how they uh, got at the gaps because I remember – they turned me over quite a bit uh, in the second half by getting in those gaps. So I just got to be ready for that and kick it out to my teammates earlier. First row here on the left. Vidal Gupta, Global Comedia. Coach Barnes, I heard in the background you're telling a lot of stories about your relationships with different coaches. Coach Campy was here, obviously supporting you. Now you're in the Elite Eight. Talk about the love and support you're getting from the people that you know, the coaches across the country at this stage. Well, people would probably be surprised how many coaches we have really terrific relationships. And uh, and I've been, again, doing it a long time and have had a chance to uh, be around a lot of good people. And uh, I've really enjoyed watching what Matt Painter's done with this program and how he's built it and what he's done and the consistency with it. But, uh, yeah, this time of year you'll get texts from different people and all that, uh, which I think every coach does. And uh, – but uh, just, again, having a chance to continue to play in a tournament that's hard to advance through and get to this point is uh, uh, something that, uh, again, these guys, we're all proud of it, but uh, we'd like to be able to keep moving. But it's going to take a great effort to do that. We have two questions on the left side. Coach, um, before the Sweet 16 matchup, Matt Painter kind of talked about his group around Zach Eady. Obviously, it's a short scout. You've played them before. Um, the focal point's going to be the nas reigning national player of the year. But what do you see from those guys around Zach Eady maybe that makes this Purdue team better than other ones you've seen before? Well, he, he, had a, uh, he got in foul trouble over there, and those guys were the ones that did the damage. I mean, they, 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 he's got a really great support around him, a cast of guys that they know each other. They, they run extremely well. They uh, know how to play together. They uh, know when uh, – you know, he's a great run stopper in Zach Eady. I mean, he's a guy that when you get something going, they can slow down. They know how to get him the ball. And he knows where he wants to catch the ball. But he, uh, again, Matt uh, has done a, just a terrific job of putting the pieces around him that uh, has got him where they have been all year, which is basically the number one team in the country or one, two team in the country and the success they've had the past couple of years. And, and it's, it's more difficult than you think when you've got a guy as dominant as, as Zach is to – get those guys to uh, understand how it's got to be played, but um, he's done a terrific job doing it. Second row. Uh, Dane O'Neill with The Athletic. Rick, you talked about Matt's program building, and I think you both kind of are similar in, in 
kind of maybe fly, fly, defying the odds of what you're supposed to be able to do these days with program building. Why does it work? I mean, a lot of people would argue that you guys are old school and it's not the way of the world anymore. Well, again, it, it people can look at it any way they want it, but I think that coaches, first of all, have to stay true to themselves in terms of what they believe in and their core values. You can't get away from that. And, uh, you know, there's no doubt that he is a player development type coach. We pride ourselves on the same thing. And I was talking earlier with someone how much uh, Josiah, Santi, and and the time they've been with us has improved, and certainly Zakai, but everybody on our team has. I mean, I think we've all improved from the beginning of the year. But uh, I just think you've got to be willing to make the adjustments from year to year that you look at your program, what do you need? But uh, we we believe, like we think we have a terrific freshman class, that when uh, these older guys leave and their time's up, that they're going to be able to slide in there, and that's what we've tried to build our program on. Uh, obviously, these two guys to my left have – uh, we knew we needed to get offense and out of the portal last year, and we were able to do that. But um, I think, again, we're going to continue to do what we think has been successful for us. Going to flip it over to the right side, the second row. Rob Lewis with VolQuest.com. Josiah, just with Zakai, how, I mean, just because of how, you know, where he was in November when you guys played the first time, how much different are you guys as a team? How much better? Yeah, the, you know, he was just coming back from his ACL injury and, you know, he was kind of hesitant. He wasn't really himself and we really didn't expect him to be, but, you know, he's had a lot of experience up until this point. He's definitely exceeded the expectations that we had and, you know, he's playing his best basketball right now and he's the leader. He's the, the engine that gets us going. And so we will, will, will rely on him heavily and they'll see a difference to Kai Ziegler come tomorrow. Back to the fifth row here on the right side. Um. My question is uh, for Josiah. Both these teams, Purdue and Tennessee, both are on the same quest. They need, Tennessee has never been to a Final Four. It's been a long time for Purdue. What's been the demeanor as somebody who's been with Tennessee for your whole career in the locker room as you've progressed on this quest? Uh, how have the players handled it? Obviously, being grateful for the position that we're in, for the group of guys that we have, but knowing that you know we want something even better. We want to be the last team standing. and so. Being able to, to be proud of where we're at and taking steps forward to that, but also knowing that you know it doesn't end here and having more hunger and more fight and wanting to make history and be that last team standing. Stick in the third row here on the right side at the end. Ryan Sylvia, Rivals.com. Jemai, just how do you feel like the post play on this team has improved since that trip to Hawaii? One more time. Say that one more time. Just how do you feel like the post play on this team has improved since Hawaii? Um, I definitely feel like uh, it, it's improved a lot. Uh, I, I think it's given Tobe and Jonas, um, our SEC players, it's given them a lot of experience to guard a lot of really good post players. And I think that was something that we didn't have when we played them the first time. Um, you know, it's definitely important. It, it, you know, it's easier said than done, but uh, I think they're really getting a lot better at positioning themselves, pushing their the bigs off the block, making sure that they're physical but without fouling, and just making sure that they're staying between them and, and him in the basket. And um, it's going to make it easier for the guards if we easier for the bigs if we pressure the the ball as guards and, and get into the basketball. But um, I definitely feel like they they've improved a lot since since the beginning of the year, and I think that's another thing that's going to be a focal point in this game, and people are going to see just how how, be how much better they got um, from then to now. We've got two questions in the fourth row on the left. Coach, uh, Akeem Glassby, Indy Star. Uh, for a player of Zach Eadie's size to, to log the minutes that he does, just what does it say about his just the level of conditioning and kind of the, the preparation that he put in for this season? Well, I think when you look at Zach Eady, I mean, from a coaching standpoint, and I think players too, you always appreciate the fact that someone gets better the way he has. I mean, he's gotten better and better every year. He runs. He, he uh, uh, you know, we'd like to think you could get guys tired, but he, uh, I think he moves extremely well. I think that's the difference in where he was a couple of years ago. He's really being able to move. He, he's a he's a good screener, uh, but he knows exactly on the court where he wants to get his space and where he wants to set up, and they do a great job of getting it to him when he gets there. But his improvement is what's really impressive. I mean, uh, I think the first time we played him, I think he missed a lot of free throws, if I remember. I think he missed a bunch. I wish he'd do it again, but uh, 
but that game was there was a lot of fouls in that game. I think we I think they shot 48 free throws. I think we shot a bunch too. But uh, he's just improved, and that's what you admire about him. You admire players who get better from year to year. Stick in the fourth row here. Larry Leach from the Associated Press. Rick, as a, a fan of the game, can you at all appreciate this matchup? Uh, Dalton and Edie, two All-Americas players, um, two programs desperately seeking a Final Four. Can any part of you kind of enjoy that? Well, when, when I look at, look at that, I think that Purdue and Tennessee, those guys are great basketball players, but their supporting cast that I'm not sure if I'd call it a supporting cast or teammates are just as valuable. And uh, like last night, I thought that uh, uh, Zakai and Jemai and, uh, and uh, Josiah, especially their leadership, their demeanor at the beginning of the game last night was exactly what we needed. And when I look at Purdue, they, they've got the same thing with their key guys. I don't think anybody's here because of, I mean, certainly Dalton's made a big impact on our basketball team. And uh, I mean, Zach Eady, I mean, he's had the spotlight on him forever. But uh, it's two really balanced teams that have depth that I think you're going to see because we, we, we played a lot of people over there. I think we played 10 or 11 people we, because we got in such foul trouble. And, but uh, it, it's both teams really, they're more than just the, the, the main event that you're talking about. I mean, those guys, they've deserved every honor that they've gotten, but they would tell you, both of them would tell you that they would defer to their teammates for helping them get what they've gotten done. We got three questions on the right side. We'll start in the fourth row. Jordan, I think you hit a three in the first game, three ten to play, tied the game, and I think Dalton hit a late three to cut it to three. What do you have to do differently in this matchup if you're in the same situation to finish strong and for the outcome to work out in your favor? Really, just stick to the script throughout the whole entire game. You know, uh, making sure we don't give them easy points and make sure they don't really get to the free throw line. Like Coach said, there's a lot of fouls called that game, and make sure we just stay solid and making everything tough and nothing easy in the paint for them. Get back up to the second row here. Coach, can you just give us an update on Santi? Can you just give us an update on Santi? Yeah, uh, he looked better today. He's with us, and uh, we won't obviously do very much today, and we'll just see really more so tomorrow, I think, once we get going. But uh, – he, he's, he, we expect him to be ready. And then to the third row to wrap it up on the right side here. Uh, Jordan and Dalton, just as transfers, is there a gain comfort level at this point in the year, maybe compared to when you first played Purdue? Who is that directed to? To Jordan. Um, I'd say, you know, with games at this high level, it's uh, – as the game goes on, you get more comfortable within the play and just start to get a real good feel of the game. And just being able to have my teammates here just giving me support throughout the whole entire game, make sure that I'm staying confident and doing whatever I need to do on the court is just amazing. And big shout out to those guys. We'll go to the left side in the first row. Casey Bartley, Boiler Upload. Josiah, just how different is it from hearing about Zach Eady to now having experience dealing with him on the court? Yeah, I feel like experience is the best teacher. And, you know, we have 40 minutes to play against him and his entire team. And we'll go back and, you know, watching that film, we, we weren't at our best. We've grown a lot, but they have as well. But, you know, just turning down on the turnovers and staying within our principles on the defensive end will be huge. They have a really, really good team. It's going to be a physical battle, but we're more than up to the challenge. We'll stick on the left side in the second row. Uh, Dana O'Neill at The Athletic. Josiah, along those terms that we were talking a lot about fouls, and, and that's what Zach Eady does. He leads the nations in fouls drawn. What can you guys do collectively to not get in foul trouble? Yeah, like Jemai said, our, our post players, JP, um, Jonas, and Tobey have, have grown so much. Uh, Shaq also guarded him a little bit as well. Um, they, they've, they've grown so much, and like he said, SEC play has prepared us for a guy like him. Obviously, it's easier said than done, but just making sure that we stay between him and the basket uh, and on all their guys is huge because it wasn't just him getting to the foul line. We kind of didn't stick to the script looking back at the film from that first game, and so just making sure that you know, no matter what happens, if they go on a run, uh, that we stay uh, with the game plan that we have in place. We're going to go back over to the right here in the third row. Rick, hey, uh, Greg Doyle with Indianapolis Star. You used your opening statement and then a question about Edie to reference twice all the fouls called in that first game. Are you kind of sending a message to the officials tomorrow? 
Well, uh, based on the way the tournament's been called, about half of those fouls wouldn't have been called. I can assure you that. And I, you know, and it, but it's early in the year, and I've said all along. I think the hardest thing about when you start uh, like we do every year, I've always thought that we should be able to play more exhibition games to give referees a chance to get more experience before you get thrown into like the the Maui tournament this year. I mean, think of it, it was it was loaded. And uh, some of the referees there hadn't been in those type games in what six months, and uh, but both teams played hard. I mean, if you, if you watch it to go back and watch that, I mean, it was a hard fall. That tournament was all from start to finish. But uh, at the time, I mean, you know, again, referees are getting started. We're getting started, and uh, did we foul? Yeah, we fouled some. Did they foul some? Yeah, they fouled some too. And the referees missed some. Yeah, they missed some too. But uh, that was. Everybody getting started, and you you really kind of expect that early in the year. A couple more minutes with the players. We'll flip it back to the left side in row two. Josh Orsch, fan side at Dalton. At near the end of the regular season in SEC play, you had some really high scoring games, and then the SEC tournament, one and done there. How have you found a balance between getting your teammates involved and looking for your own shot? Because it seemed like in the NCAA tournament, that's been a better balance for you guys offensively. Yeah, I just say. Uh just reading the secondary defender and seeing how my one dribble would affect uh, I could get a wide open shot versus me getting a teammate wide open shot. So I'll just say just reading that secondary defender and just, you know, I got trust in all my teammates and got the confidence in them to go up and shoot that three and knock it down. Back to the fifth row here on the right. Uh, Todd Golden with CNHI. Uh, Rick, a uh, lot of questions obviously about Zach Eady, but he's got to get the ball. Uh, what's kind of the art of attacking the post feed to him? Uh, how much do you fall back on the last game and just on your general principles on how to handle that? Well, the art of it, it's got to be a team defense. I mean, uh, again, he's, he's a, a terrific player. And again, I, I, I admire anybody that knows where his space is to work and works hard to get there. And again, Matt has some great schemes to not let you see the same thing over and over, but he knows what he's looking for. His teammates knows where he, he needs to get it, when he needs to get it. And uh, so with that said, it takes five guys being connected defensively. And, and uh, uh, you know, Jemai talked about uh, ball pressure, important, because if you they're such a good passing team, if you don't uh, try to take their vision away a little bit, they're going to put it on, on the dime, on time. And, and uh, but it's taken all five guys to stay connected and and working to try to make it as tough as possible. Because he, he's going to get his points. He, he's, he's too good a player. He, he understands his space so well. And um, one of the hardest things to do is to keep him off the offensive boards. I mean, he's a hard guy to guard when he misses his own shot. And uh, it's, it's just a talent. He's, he's good at it. And uh, But that's a very difficult – there's not a drill for that. I, I wish there were, but there's not. He's just uh, it's great hands. and. He's right there at the rim, and when they come off, he's got a great way of getting it back and putting it back in. And But he does a good job rebounding, too. You've, you've got to try to keep him from getting too close because he can get his hands on so many balls and slap them out. But um, I mean, he's, he's a hard cover. He really is. we got more on the, one more on the right side here. We'll get one more time for one more uh, question for the players. Sure, thank you. Rick Russo, WVLT, Knoxville. Rick, Pat Summit used to say that this round, the Elite Eight, may very well be the toughest round in the tournament because everybody's trying to get to that Final Four. Do you think that might – you've been there, obviously. Do you think that might be the case? I, I think they're all tough. I mean, first of all, getting into tournament's tough. I mean, you, it's, I mean, it's a grind to get there every year. And, and, uh, but getting started because of the, the pressure of being in it uh, and you know your people around you, you, you feel it, especially for guys that haven't been there. And, uh, but yet yeah, we've we've seen the the magical runs by teams, the upsets and all that. Now with every seed winning a game at some point, and then uh, the next one, and it's, so they're all difficult. But the one thing is, you continue to move. You know you're playing against a team that's playing well, or they wouldn't be where they are. And uh, so that's again, you'd like to think that most teams right now are playing at an extremely high level, and hope that uh, we can con we can continue to do that. Okay, we're all set with the student athletes, guys. Thanks for your time. You can go out to the breakout rooms. Those are to your immediate right when you exit the back of the media room here. We'll continue here in just a second with Coach Barnes. Thank you. Appreciate it. We'll get
get those nameplates to the media room here as well. Okay, uh, we'll continue with Coach Barnes. We'll start here in the second row, the third row on the right. Hey, Rick, uh, David Cobb from CBS Sports. Uh, how have you seen the Tennessee Athletic Department leadership and the commitment to basketball evolve over your nine years? It's been, it's been great. When Dave Hart hired me, the one thing he did say to me, he said, I'd like for you to really build a program, uh, a program that we can watch grow. And, uh, and obviously, I think we need to talk about building a program. You're talking about consistency, having a chance to be in the fight every year and having a chance to be highly competitive. And certainly um, uh, in the league that we're in, uh, we've been given the resources. But uh, over the from the time that Dave left, we've had different uh, leadership, uh, not just in the athletic department, but at the top of the university. And I don't think there's a university in the country right now that has the leadership that we have with Randy Boyd as our president of the UT system. And what Don D. Plowman has done on campus is uh, phenomenal. And then uh, Danny White coming in, I mean, I don't know uh, how he's done it, but he has just totally transformed so much around our athletic program and our facilities. and. And uh, so they, they deserve a lot of credit for setting the tone of where they want the University of Tennessee to be. Coach, let's go to the left side here in the second row. Wes Rucker, 24-7 uh, Sports. Rick, when you – you know Santi for a while, obviously, and what have the past few days and your interactions with him, how tough has it been on him, especially given everything that happened in the fall? Well, well he, he was sick. I mean, you, you just had to look at him. I mean, you know, we try, obviously tried to quarantine him as quick as we could to keep him away from the team. And, but when we were around him and he was seeing everything we were doing by Zoom in his room, uh, knowing if he could, there's any way possible, because, you know, Santi, as you guys know, has a great basketball IQ, and he knows what we're doing as well as I know what we're trying to get done. And, but he just, he, he, he couldn't. He, he thought he, had, he did break the fever, and we thought he was going to be okay. Then the fever came back. and. And uh, but you could tell by just when we were around him, he was uh, looked like he had no energy. But uh, and, and we hate it for him because he's been such a huge part of the program and and obviously he is. And I just hope today he feels like he's got some energy back. We're gonna go to the front row here near the end. Rick, uh, what does it say about the state of college basketball that? Uh, Zach and Dalton have both risen to the top under such unique and unheralded starts. Uh, I think, again, I don't know Zach Eady that well, but uh, just watching him and listening to him and knowing what I know about Matt, uh, and, I, and I know Dalton, obviously, now after being with him for a year, humility, uh, have great humility, and the fact that, uh, again, when Dalton came on his visit, he didn't ask about a big NIL he didn't talk about that he didn't talk about starting he just said I just want to be part of a program where players get better I want to be around good players that want to win would love to be able to help help be part of an NCAA team and make a run in March and I want to be coached hard and uh, and I would just watching Zach Eady and how he's improved and knowing what I know about Matt again I, I think the word I would use with both of them is humility Thanks, Coach. Fifth row on the left, Tony. Yeah, Rick, Tony Paul, Detroit News. I'm just curious, um, how much are you kind of allowing yourself to enjoy this in the moment, maybe more so than you did 20 years ago, knowing now how difficult it is to get here? Well, yeah, I mean, you're right. I mean, I, years ago, I don't, I know I didn't enjoy it as much because, um, wanting to keep going further and further. And with that, maybe in some ways put more pressure on guys than maybe they should have. But uh, uh, I do know this, it's a player's game. And uh, I know that uh, when we're at this point, we, we have done a lot like today. There's not a lot to be done right now other than hope we can get great rest. And uh, But I've never been able to really enjoy it a lot until it's over with because uh, I, I mean, I got back last night. I went to bed at three, woke up at five, and and uh, just thinking, my mind not so. And I think that's probably true of most coaches, you know, when you're this time of year. And then my first thought was when I saw those guys, I asked them how much sleep they got, uh, and uh, because it was, like I said last night, I thought we were playing Friday, Sunday, but we played Sat, we're playing Saturday, Sunday, really, and but. Uh, 
it's it's uh when you're when when you're in the midst of it it's hard because you just got to let it go real quick and get to the next and you're obviously concerned about every one of your players and uh but you do have that feeling after quickly after a win you know there's a I don't even know if I'd say it's relief or whatever, but the fact that you're excited for those guys, and yet you're excited for for everyone involved in. But uh, then your mind quickly shifts to what's next. Just one row up, coach, in the fourth row. Hey, coach uh, Eddie Pels with AP. You're talking talking about building a program. Just curious for some thoughts on kind of the impact and the imprint, obviously, of the of Coach Summit. And the women's program at your school for all these years. Yeah, you know, I was fortunate to know uh, Pat. She, uh, she and I, uh, we were on the Converse committee together. We used to do a lot of clinics, and uh, one thing I really admired about her uh, when she would we'd be at these clinics, she would s sit in on them and listen, and she always asked questions, and uh, we talked about it, and. Uh, uh, then we also used the Baden basketball, so we we were around each other. And then uh, she loved talking basketball. I mean, she loved it, and uh, I mean, she was a basketball coach. And uh, but yet, what she built and has built that has sustained at the University of Tennessee, and that's the fact that it, it was a program that uh, was built on work. Uh, they uh, again hearing the stories there and. I've watched uh, how hard Kelly Harper has worked to, to, uh, just to, I mean, think about it. I think they're the only team that's gone to every single NCAA tournament, which is, I mean, unthinkable, really, and, and to do what they've done with the kind of pressure that's been there. And now the ga their game has grown so much, too. But uh, her legacy will uh, will be more than just th those crystal balls. That, that, that's a beautiful thing when you walk into women's. Uh, her legacy goes far beyond that. And... Uh, really in some ways uh, a once-in-a-lifetime coach person that uh, truly made her mark. Thanks, Coach. We're going to move it back to the right side in the fourth row, right near the end. Yep. Hey, Coach. Gabe Prime from the Purdue Exponent. Can you talk about game planning for a team that's kind of dual-faceted? They've got the dominant inside guy of ED, but they also shoot the three-ball to a high clip. How do you kind of game plan for a team that can go inside but also shoot the ball just as well? Well, again, it goes back to what we were talking about with five guys got to be connected because they're, uh, again, Zach Eady, again, we could talk about them all day, but there are so many other guys on that team we could talk about too that understand their role, they do their job. And uh, you really have to be in uh, relentless pursuit of sustaining your effort uh, for, within a possession. You, you turn your back, you turn your head, you stop for a split second, 0.5 seconds, they're moving around, searching out the three-point line. Uh, back cut. They're, they're, they they know how to play basketball. Again, so well coached, and uh, it takes five guys willing to make a sustained effort for 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 possession after possession after possession, going from play to play to play. Okay, third row on the right. We're gonna have two questions. Hey, Rick. Greg Doyle again from the Indy Star. Um, do you get a sense when you watch teams, especially one you're about to play? There's, I guess, two kinds of schools. Maybe there's, there's those are on the joyride, and there's the, here on a business trip. Can you see which one of those two Purdue has looked like? No, I think they've been business like. I, I do. I mean, from the time, we, I mean, over even in Maui. I, again, that tournament. I mean, think about it. In three days, we played Syracuse, Purdue, and and Kansas. And uh, I mean, it's just a great tournament over there. But. Uh, I've always thought that um, again, when you when you have when you're talking about uh, building programs, I think it's always a business approach to it, a work ethic approach to it. Knowing that every time you go out, you got a chance to get better, be better, to try to build to these tight moments. You talked about playing Saturday Sunday effectively. What sense can you make of if you can make any of you guys having the late game last night, but you're here first? 12 hours later, and then also, and someone has to play Sunday at two, but, you know, why you? What, 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 please tee off on somebody for me. Yeah, you know what? I mean, you think about all that sometimes, but regardless of what it is, I mean, you know, you're probably what, if I say we went to bed last night at uh, our guys, I think Josiah told me he was in bed at four. I would imagine the Purdue players watched our game and, doing what guys do today, we're probably in bed one thirty-two. so there's probably a two-hour window there one way or the other. 
the difference is uh, the other game, the second game is being played. I think what uh, Central Time Zone, probably, and but it's it is what it is. You you deal with it, and uh, they're young guys, and one of our big things will be recovery, uh, and I'm sure Purdue the same thing. We because we know it's going to be a hard fought game, and uh, so a big part of today and even last night we were and one of the reasons we were late getting out of here last night where we have three or four guys that they love to take ice baths. And uh, so we had to wait on those guys. Who, you know, they jump in it for about seven to ten minutes. And so it's all about recovery and doing what we need to do to be ready. Back to the left side, Coach, here in the second row. Josh Orish, fan-sided. You mentioned adding Jordan and Dalton for their offense. And I talked to Dalton about the end of the season. You know, he was getting more shots up and becoming almost heliocentric on offense. How do you balance wanting those guys to get – all their looks because they're such good offensive players, Dalton especially, and getting everyone involved because you want to play high ball pressure defense, things like that. And that's hard to ask of somebody when they're not getting touches, they're not getting shots. So how do you balance that buy-in? And what do you tell Dalton, uh, whether to look for his shot or look for others? No, I, I tell him, uh, like last night, he took a couple tough shots. And I told him, I said, you're going to have to spray that ball. But, you know, when he makes a couple, he's like any guy that can score. He's going to – the old heat check and see if it's going. But, uh, you know, uh, we, we believe in balance. We, in, in the flow of the game, we're expecting those guys to play off the concepts that we talk about, work on from day one. And uh, then on dead balls, yeah, we can make calls and get shots and do those type things, knowing full well that Purdue, uh, Creighton did a great job of having us scouted. And there's not going to be a lot of easy shots. And you're going to you're gonna have to take some tough shots and – contested shots and hope you can make them and we, we got a couple guys that can do that but uh, you know there, there's we Dalton and I've had that discussion you know when when he needs to uh, facilitate and uh, and he and he, he's really adjusted well to it he does he's, he's not a selfish player at all but sometimes too you know that you got to get a guy like that going so last night early you know we started a game uh, running a set for him to try to get it going and Tomorrow night it might be we might go a different way, and uh, but uh, we what we what's got gotten us to this point we've got to just try to hope that it is enough and we've got to execute it at a high level. Back to the third, I'm sorry, the third row here on the right side. Ryan Silvia, Rivals.com. Both Jemai and Josiah talked about how SEC play helped in the development of Jonas and Tobey. Do you agree? And what is it about conference play that kind of helps develop a big? Well, our conference this year, I, again, I think when you look at our league, and, and, and everyone, I, I say it, everyone says that their league is the best and this, that, or whatever. But our league, I mean, going into the last week of the season, there, were, we, there was a possibility of having a five-way tie for first place. And coming down the stretch, we had to play Texas A&M, Alabama, Auburn, South Carolina, all those back-to-back. -back. And, uh, and we know each other so well. And it's so hard to, to get clean looks. It's just hard because you just you, – in the conference, that's what makes it so difficult. Coaches know each other. But they've – you know, they, they just, we just know each other. And it's, and it's hard. And uh, so – that along with again our non-league schedule, you know, we we felt like we had put together a great schedule at the beginning of the year. And at one time, I really kind of thought it hurt us because we weren't able to develop our young players because we were in so many one-two possession games that we weren't able to get those guys out there as much as we'd have liked to. And but uh, uh, our league uh, is uh, when I first got there was a very athletic league, uh, strong physical league. It has changed now where it's not only that, it's the high, we've gotten so much more skill in our league. And great coaches, uh, again, I think there's always been terrific coaches in the SEC and college basketball in general, but uh, it's just, um, and I really think more of a commitment uh, from universities that maybe hadn't done it in the past where every time you go out on the court, you know you're going to be challenged and there's some, some great deal of physicality in our league. Second row on the left here, Coach. Wes Rucker with 24-7 Sports. Rick, was there any indication that, that y'all had just from anything in practice or meetings or anything that Josiah would start shooting the ball like this again and get more aggressive and, and accurate 
going into this tournament? No, I, I, I think the one thing as coaches, we, we all wish we could <clears throat> coach making shots uh, going in anyway. Trying to that's uh, when you start doing that. But when you work, I mean, Josiah is one of those guys that uh, like Dalton, like Zakai, uh, just hours on hours in the gym by himself. And uh, when he, uh, I thought his his mindset was just terrific yesterday, and uh, he. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, you've seen this, Wes. We, I mean, he, he's capable of doing it. And uh, right now is when you want, you'd want you like to see them all go in. But as long as he's taking good shots, and, and I will say this, when it leaves his hand, when he's set up the way we want him to get set up, we think it is going in. But uh, uh, I just hope he can continue to with his mindset that he's got right now because he was just terrific on defense last night. Last question for Coach in the back left here. Uh, Tanner Johnson with the Daily Beacon. There's so much been made, uh, rightfully so, about Zach Eady and what the interior guys have to do to uh, limit him the best they can. But what about the perimeter players, what you have to do to contain produce guards? They've got some dangerous guys that can drive and, and shoot as well. Again, uh, team defense, you got to have it. Uh, and again, I'm not sure those guys maybe get all the attention they should because I've watched you know a lot of attention go to Dalton where We've got guys on our team that make so many winning plays, things that don't show up in a uh, stat like Jemai Meshack. Uh, uh, the stuff he does that doesn't show up on a, a scouting report is really amazing. Even Zakai, some things that he does, Josiah, I mean, Santi, those guys. And, and I look at Purdue players the same way. They've got guys out there that maybe aren't talked about as much as people might know. But when you watch them getting ready to play against them, you have the utmost respect for them because of how hard they play and how hard they work at doing their job. Coach, thanks for your time. <coughs> we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you, guys.